Welcome back to the channel, the real history of football, Sheffield, the home of football. You're looking at the very epicentre of association football history. In the mid-1850s, you would not have seen railways, car parks and retail outlets. You would have seen fields and lanes. And if you'd stood here after October 1857, you may have seen Sheffield football club players enjoying a game of football. In these videos, I've been so far taking you on walks around the different parts of Sheffield where association football began. Talking to you while I walk and taking the time, the time needed to explain properly about Sheffield's real contribution to the game's development and in doing so, make the argument for why Sheffield needs to be considered the real home of football. For the subject of this video, the six in our series, I'm going to focus on Sheffield FC, the first and oldest association football club, a club that still exists, an incredibly significant club in the history of the game, and a club that still has an ongoing interesting life history. One of the main reasons why Sheffield FC have survived now for over 165 years is because of their willingness to be nomadic and move home. In their history so far, they have had at least 12 different grounds. These ground locations are far apart, ranging from the northwest of Sheffield around the Hillsborough area right down to the south and into Derbyshire, so actually outside of Sheffield. To do justice to Sheffield FC's story, I need to present things this time in short walks and visits, as it's unrealistic to walk between all the locations in the 20 minutes or so we have here. So if you've seen previous videos, you know we are in the area where Sheffield FC and association football first started in the Queen's Road B&Q car park, the other side of the railway line where we've just been. The ground was called East Bank, but some historians refer to it as Strawberry Hall Lane Park. This is because the road down to this area on the west side of it in the 1850s was just a small lane called Strawberry Hall Lane. The club's first dressing room was at Park House, which is here on the map. And today it's on the other side of the Midland Railway to where most of the pitch would have been. We already have mentioned a lot about Sheffield FC, massively important in the development of the game, born out of unofficial kickabouts at Bramall Lane from 1855, and also born out of a desire for winter fitness by two members of the Sheffield Cricket Club, Nathaniel Creswick and William Prest. Creswick and Prest were ambitious and forward thinking. They basically invented the template for a football club as a model for other clubs. They didn't call their club East Bank, but took the name of the whole city and later took the club and its city name around the wider area promoting the game they created. They next came up with the game's first proper rules, rules designed to be played by others, rules that massively impacted on the rules developed later by the English FA, and beyond that point being the most popular rules to play at the time. This club template and rules combination continued to influence how emerging teams across the country, teams that are now household names today, how it influenced how they played and developed their game throughout at least the next two decades and beyond. Sheffield FC left the East Bank ground in 1873. This was because they were under pressure from the developing Midland Railway. They moved to nearby Bramall Lane. They stayed at Bramwell Lane for 11 years, but in 1884 they needed to move again to the emerging industrial east end of Sheffield, and they played briefly at Newall Athletic Ground, and then nearby Old Forge Ground in Attercliffe. Newall is here, it's now a scrapyard. The ground is lost to the scrapyard and the railway behind it. The location of the old forge ground, to my knowledge, is not certain. My best guess is that it was here, which is the only realistic open space in the area you could play football. It was next to the Attercliffe Works, between the Works and Sherlin Lane. Some sources state that players changed at the Steam Clock Inn, but again I can't find where this inn was to give me any clues to the ground's location. 
If anybody knows, please let me know. The area where I believe the ground could have been is now built up and just across the road from the Attercliffe tram stop today. So before we get too far into this video, let's take stock on the map of where we are. Sheffield, England of course, just south of the centre. We started this video in the Olive Grove Road bus depot, looking across the railway at the location of East Bank, Sheffield FC's first ground, located in this B&Q car park. We then walked up Olive Grove Road to its junction with East Bank Road to see where Park House was, the club's first changing rooms. We are now walking back down Olive Grove Road and then up Healy Bank Road to see a sports ground for reasons I will explain later. To recap, Sheffield SC moved from East Bank to Bramall Lane in 1873. Then they moved out to the east of Sheffield in 1884 to the New Hall Athletic Ground and shortly after to the Old Forge Ground which is likely to be in Attercliffe, next to the tram stop and Sherland Lane. So, on to ground number five. In 1889, after five years in the East End, Sheffield FC decided to move west, this time to near Hunter's Bar and to a ground called after the road it sat by, Eccleshall Road. The Eccleshall Road ground was here, where the Sheffield Tennis and Squash Club now stands. The ground had been used previously by Lockwood Brothers FC, who in 1887 reached the last 16 of the FA Cup, losing to finalists that year, West Brom, after a replay. Just to clarify the location, we're just here west of Hunter's Bar on the north side of Eccleshall Road. We've been south, east and west, so in 1897, after only eight years at Eccleshall Road, the club moved north to Ollerton. The ground must have been at the then cricket ground, just east of Hillsborough Barracks, next to the River Loxley. This is because Ollerton Stadium wasn't built until the 1930s, so the ground couldn't have been at that location. The cricket ground is now lost, and it's now a Swan Morton. Swan Morton makes specialist surgical blades. 1901 and the new century took Sheffield FC just down the road to Niagara at Wadsley Bridge. It's just up the River Don from the then newly built Hillsborough Stadium. Both are still there of course. Sheffield FC will have celebrated the 50th birthday at the Niagara Ground. Just a quick update on locations. It's northwest Sheffield and here is the location of Olerton. Olderton Cricket Ground is now a Swan Morton's. Interestingly, it's yards down the road from Sheffield FC's famous first game with Hillsborough Barracks in 1858 with the Hillsborough Barracks Soldiers. Then up Penniston Road, we pass Hillsborough Stadium and just beyond is Niagara, now on the other side of the Don from Sheffield Wednesday's current training grounds. The club stayed at Niagara for 20 years and left in 1921 to move from North Sheffield to at the time Derbyshire and the newly built Abbeydale Park in Door. The ground has been a county cricket venue for both Derbyshire and Yorkshire and was Sheffield FC's home for right up until 1988. As you can see it also still exists. This is Abbeydale Park in South Sheffield. For just one year in 1988, Hillsborough Park was the next home and in 1989, the club spent their time at Olderton Stadium across Penniston Road from Hillsborough Park. So back up to the northwest of Sheffield, we're at Hillsborough Park. It used to have a running track and it's here that a very young Sebastian Coe, athlete and politician, ran for Hallamshire Harriers. As I've said, for one year in 1989, Olerton Stadium was home. Both these grounds are in the area just south of Hillsborough Stadium. So if you are ever in the area and want to visit the home of Sheffield FC's historic sites, there are at least six within walking distance of Sheffield Wednesday's current ground. 
Hillsborough Park is here and Ollerton Stadium here. Both just south of Hillsborough Stadium, Sheffield Wednesday's home, here. 1990 made use of the Don Valley Stadium, built for the World Student Games of 1991. It's now a school academy. This was home for 11 years and saw the club once again being located in Sheffield's East End. Albeit a very different East End to the one they would have experienced over 100 years earlier. And then in 2001, the club moved to their current location, back into North Derbyshire in Johnfield at the Coach and Horses. More about the Coach and Horses in a minute, but first, we've now arrived at Olive Grove Sports Ground. In recent times, Sheffield FC, driven by their wonderfully energetic chairman, Richard Timms, have been seeking a new permanent home actually in Sheffield. And they have actually really tried to move back to a home as close to the original East Bank ground as they possibly could. Just a few years ago, they were considering a move to here, the Olive Grove Sports Ground, which would have been amazing, being only a few minutes walk from where they started at East Bank. Olive Grove Sports Ground is just a few fields away from where East Bank was. It's near to good transport links and with the space to build a stadium and ample parking, etc. Unfortunately, these plans fell through and the dream of being just yards up the hill from East Bank has gone for the moment anyway. Just down in that cutting is the same railway that forced Sheffield FC away from their original East Bank ground back in 1873. It's ironic that the current ground, the Coach and Horses, is right next to that same railway, if only a little further south. OK, if you're counting so far, Sheffield FC have had 12 homes. This is the 12th. They're actually looking to move again, but we'll come to that in a moment. Sheffield FC, by their very existence, claimed the first ever games involving a club, this being at Hillsborough Barracks in 1858, and the first game between organised clubs when they played Hallam in December 1860. But they also have other claims and records to note. These include the invention of the crossbar, the first women's football club members in 1859, and the first to hold a mass spectator athletics meeting in 1858. Early on in football, there were strong connections between football and athletics. Sheffield FC played in the world's first ever charity match, played in December 1861 at Hyde Park. This is Hyde Park in Sheffield at Park Hill. This match was against, of course, Hallam. The ground is now lost to a housing estate called Manor Oaks. To continue Sheffield's impact on the game, they were the first provincial club to join the English FA in 1863. They were the inventors of the 90-minute game in 1866. This is 11 years before it became an English FA law. They also introduced the notion of shin pads during the game against Nottingham Forest in 1874. There will be many others I've missed, but I doubt no other club can claim as many firsts and influences on the game as Sheffield FC can. This impact is officially noted by FIFA. In 2004, Sheffield FC was awarded the FIFA Order of Merit. This was for its contributions to the game. Out of the hundreds of thousands of clubs in the world, only one other club has won this award, and that's Real Madrid. Sheffield FC have been at the Coach and Horses ground now for over 20 years and they now want a brand new purpose-built stadium back in Sheffield. Sheffield FC don't have to go far to find ground number 13. In fact, about a mile north to get into Sheffield and to a location that, fingers crossed, will give them a posh new home and hopefully a home they can actually stay at for a long time. Let's see where that is. Here is where the Coach and Horses ground is in Dronfield, just south of the Sheffield boundary. Here is Meadowhead and the Sheffield Transport Sports Club, hopefully the next home to Sheffield FC. It was transport that ironically forced Sheffield FC away from their original ground at East Bank, and I guess it was written in the stars that transport would one day pay them back. 
Once built, the ground will be called the home of football stadium. The location isn't an historical location as far as football is concerned, but hey, you have to live in the real world, and who would deny such a club as Sheffield FC use of this title? Newmarket is the home of horse racing, St Andrews of golf, rugby of rugby, so football does need a recognised epicentre to link it with its origins. Are we to make a B&Q car park the home of football? Maybe. Personally, I think the real home of football is the city of Sheffield itself, and we should see signs declaring this across the city, as you get off trains, buses, and as you drive into Sheffield on the motorways. If the home of football is to be an actual current ground, then I think most football historians would support Sheffield FC's ground name. Even if it isn't actually where they started, it will at least be the home of the only club that really deserves the ground it plays on to be called that glorious title. The current home of the world's first and oldest club, the home of football. Meadowhead, the home of football, for now yes, but I asked Sheffield FC to be delicate and careful with the exhibitions they put on and the things they display at their new ground. They need to acknowledge Sheffield FC's history quite rightly, but also Sheffield the city's contribution to the development of association football as a home. That also needs to be recognised. I'm confident this will be the case. Okay, a final word. I assume by watching this video that you have a passion for football to the extent that you are at least also interested in the history of the game. If that's the case, then I encourage you next time you visit Sheffield to make the time to come and see Sheffield FC's home, whether it still be at the Coach and Horses or here at Meadowhead. If you have more time, then go and see some of the other historic locations, especially East Bank. You will have a club, I guess. While visiting Sheffield FC, just reflect for a moment. The club you are looking at isn't any other club. The club you are looking at was the first, born not out of students playing into house games or railway men kicking a ball about, but the first organised association football club. This club influenced yours, influenced how your club's organised and how your club played the game and plays the game today. This club influenced the emergence of the rules that your club plays by. This club holds the FIFA order of merit for its contribution to the game. Unless you are a Real Madrid fan, then your club has no honour that comes close. You are looking at association football history at its core. Let's finish this video where we started overlooking East Bank. In the next video, we need to take stock of all of Sheffield's football firsts. First, that make the city the true home of football. We've mentioned many during the series so far, but it's important we at least take time out in one video to document them all in one place. If you've liked the content, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and leave a helpful comment if you have one, please. Till next time.